everyone welcome back to a new post today and today let's discuss the most important points that you need to keep track for october 3rd uh, with regard to the upsc civil services examination of 2025 and the very let's look at some of the economic terms uh, uh, today and uh, the very first one is about investors into the secondary market or the stock market so some uh, few investors called as qualified institutional placements now this is i'm sorry this is a, a, a instrument and the qualified institutional institutional buyers are the investors so the qual uh, qualified institutional payments is a way of the companies to raise capital in the secondary market by selling of shares or other securities to qualified institutional buyers now it is a very co popular method uh, especially for the companies to raise capital quickly and efficiently in india and many other south asian countries as well uh, so who can participate in the qualified institutional placement now qips are typically offered to the qualified institutional buyers which include the mutual funds venture capital funds pension funds and other institutional investors what are the benefits now we qips are faster very cheaper and often other ways and cheaper than the other ways of raising money as well and they also allow the companies to avoid relying too much on foreign fund sources so however there are certain drawbacks qips can dilute the stake of this existing shareholders and the success of the qip depends totally on the market condition and the security and exchange board of india introduced qips in 2006 to help the indian companies to raise uh, money domestically and the other most important uh, instrument that was always in use along with fdi is fpi so fpi involves investors acquiring financial assets such as stocks bonds etc in another country to diversify their portfolio usually members from other countries invest in other countries through foreign portfolio investments there is a very slight difference between fdi and fpi as well so under direct investments or fdi the fips uh, unlike uh, fdi the fips do not confer management or control over the assets of the company and fpi constitutes securities and other financial assets held by investors in other country it does not provide the investor with direct ownership of the country's assets and also it is relatively liquid depending upon the volatility of the market they can leave the market any time whenever they feel that the wallet uh, the ma market is volatile therefore it's not as strong as fdi or not as long term as fdi and it's very very unstable uh, uh unstable i'm sorry uh, th this is with regard to fpi so along with fdi fpi is one of the common ways to invest in overseas economy fdi and fpi are important sources of funding for most of the economies the next most important issues is about input tax credit so input tax credit or itc uh, is related to gst in india and uh, it is a tax incentive that allows the tax payers to subtract the amount of the credit they have accrued from the total they owe to the state so it can also be um, credit credit granted in recognition of the taxes already paid on the form of a discount so it can be unrecognized or recognized itc another way uh, to think of uh, tax credit is nothing but a rebate that is added into the tax but then it is refunded to the tax payer input tax credit and the gst is uh, prepaid back so uh, finally the producer or the last seller of the good can uh, can uh, can claim this input tax credit from the government of india and even people who pay the tax also they also can claim the input tax credit when they file the gst so paid by the taxable person uh, on any purchase of goods or services that are used or will be used in a business so i'm sorry they are not paid by the consumers but only by the uh, sellers for their business. so the last uh, seller till the last seller the input tax credit is applicable input tax credit can be reduced now it depends upon the seller if he gives a discount to the consumer uh, for the input tax credit that he is going to pay back to the government of india or any other government as well uh, however most of the uh, sellers do not uh, reduce the input tax credit from the tax that they impose on the consumers and this is one issue of concern so input tax credit can be reduced from the gst payable on the sale by the tax payable only when he uh, after filing his gst returns and after fulfilling some conditions the conditions are that he has to file his gst returns on time and also these rules uh, can be stringent in nature sometimes if he is not uh, you know giving an account of his gst uh, as well 
what the the next most important is about bear market so we always use these uh, hear about these terms it's related to the secondary market once again and also related to the economy so the bear is a prolonged decline in the stock prices uh, with major indices falling below 20% or more for their for, from their highs and the bear market in a financial market experiencing prolonged decline so it's a re, it's a time period of prolonged declines generally of 20% or more a bear market usually occurs along widespread in investor pessimism be also policies of the government as well large scale liquidation of the securities and other assets and weakening of the economy lack of investment lack of production lack of manufacturing or service activity and also if the raw material or the primary sector is hurt as well bear markets are often associated with declines in the overall market index but the individual securities or commodities can also be considered to be taken into uh, cons uh, consideration in the bear market if they experience a decline of 20% or more over a sustained long period of time that means like two months or more and bear market may also accompany general economic downturns like recession as well inflation as well bear markets are seen as opposite of uptrending of bull markets and short sellings uh, options inverse e edfs are some of the in uh, ways that investors can make money during a bear market when the prices fall as well so what exactly is a bull market? A bull market is a term that is used to describe the financial market where the prices are rising, expected to rise also. So it is most often used to refer to the stock market that can be applied uh, to anything that is traded such as bonds, real estate, currencies and commodities as well. The prices of these instruments rise and fall continuously when they are traded and but the bull market occurs over extended periods like a bear market as well and with large portions of the security prices rising overall. Bull markets tend to last for numerous months or even years as well but not years but definitely yes months and the opposite of a bull market is bear so uh, in which the prices trend to downturn the term bull market is usually used in conjunction with stock markets that's a secondary market but can also describe any financial market that's moving up as well and the next one issue is about OPEC plus. So recently the West Asia crisis of Israel and Iran have brought into focus the OPEC, the cartel that actually decides on the prices of the petroleum products that need to, that influence the markets all over. So OPEC plus or OPEC plus is a group of countries that work together to influence the global oil market. And most of the countries are the largest oil producers of the world, mainly located in West Asia, some in South America and Indonesia from Asia being a member as well. So it's a pet, it's called as petrol oil organization for petroleum exporting countries and the, it is an intergovernmental organization that coordinates the petroleum policies of its member countries. OPEC's mission is to ensure steady income for producers and also they uh, decide on the price based on the market conditions as well and also the amount of petroleum that needs to be uh, produced or that needs to be supplied in the market. So they take into consideration fair return of capital for the investor and, and also efficient supplies and also the price and also the nature of the market that's going on globally. Uh, so their decisions definitely affect the supply of this very basic raw material that is an input to almost all the goods and uh, uh, services uh, because service even transportation and logistics comes under services. Now there is a group called as OPEC Plus. So it's a country that works in these members are not the members of OPEC but they work in co close coordination with the OPEC to influence the global oil market. Uh, two of them are Russia and Kazakhstan and OPEC let me tell you was founded in 1960 by Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela. The organization's headquarters is located in Vienna and these are the important issues that I thought I should be discussing with you for October 3rd for your UPSC preliminary examination. If you did please do like share and subscribe and don't forget to comment at the end of the video. I shall see you in the next post. Until then it's very happy learning.